she was the first Zuby one. got valley yeah. fever. Yeah. And um, she started coughing four weeks after we moved here and got a fever. I took her in and x-rayed her lungs. And they look just like lungs of dogs that have valley fever. We have a lot of rodents with rodent holes. And we had 100 tons of new soil, native soil, brought into the yard. But it's pretty clearly a kind of a point exposure probably associated with something that was going on in this backyard when we moved in. We can all get it from the same thing. I mean, we can all breed the same spores. So, but you can't get it from the dog and the dog can't get it from you. Well, my mother's had it, I've she's had immune. It. I had it way back in the 70s. Yeah. And I had to have surgery for it because we had no medication and they removed part of the upper right lobe of my lung. And that was in 1971. She brought her home and she discovered the valley fever. It took a month. It was October. Um, she was 23rd. October 23rd, <laughs> and she couldn't walk. She couldn't continue. Lisa had to pick her up and carry her. She wouldn't eat, and Lisa fed her three, si three times a day by hand for nine months. She tried every drug that was available and it was not working and that's where they went to the ABLE set. The company, the company that developed the drug gave us about $10,000 worth of medication and we treated 23 really sick dogs over the next two and a half to three years. And that was um, sort of my first adventure into clinical research on valley fever and I mean these were dogs that were failing medication. So the next step for them was euthanasia. And those are the kind of dogs we enrolled and we saved about 50 to 60 percent of them. In the weeks before I felt the pain in my chest, two to three weeks is the incubation period. You, I must have acquired it, breathed it in from the air sometime in that time frame, two to three weeks before. And I had been working on a grant for two to three weeks before. The only places I went, home, car, work, work, car, home. I actually recall being right outside here on the little causeway. There's a little bridge that connects the two buildings to each other. I'm thinking to myself, ah, I'm finally outside. I'm gonna just let the air hit me and breathe in the air. You don't have to be out in the wilderness to get this. You don't have to be digging in the dirt in order to get this. When spores, little fungi, are on the wind, blowing through the air, and all you have to do is merely walk into that little pocket of wind and inhale it, that's a very, very difficult thing to answer. How and where did you get it? So uh, the presumption is I just walked into the wrong pocket of wind.